Father in heaven, we bow before you tonight. We declare your majesty tonight. We lift up our voices to you tonight. We acknowledge your faithfulness upon our lives tonight. Father, please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father and our God, tonight is an awesome night that you have gathered us together to bless us. Because you are the original father from the very beginning. Please, Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. More than ever before, do something awesome tonight. Bless our lives. Heal the sick. Deliver the oppressed. Save souls tonight. Do something unusual in our lives tonight. Let the one saying a big amen receive a big blessing from you tonight. And by the time this day is out, cause our joy to be full. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You are sure you are the one that will receive the biggest blessing today. Shout the loudest. Hallelujah. Now quickly put your hands together for the Lord as we celebrate the grace of God upon the life of Bidemi Olauba and his team. Celebrate Jesus in their lives. There's something about this young man. Every time he ministers, he keeps getting better. My prayer for you is that very, very soon, the Lord will take you to levels beyond your comprehension. His grace upon your life will continually be multiplied. You will never, ever expire. Your place, no man will take. The Lord will lift you up. And every member of your team, he will take them from glory to glory. You will finish strong and finish well. You will not lose your crown of glory. It shall be well with you. Because you are so associated to this family of champions, God will make you a champion forever. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Put your hands together for the Lord. God bless you. Please recover your seats. Choristers, God bless you. Celebrate the best choir in the whole world. Is that how you celebrate your own? Uh -huh. I want to welcome you to this very special service. It's the Father's blessing. And I'm sure there's someone that will live here with the biggest blessing tonight. Who is that fellow? Uh, where is he? Where is she? Can you rise up and shout a loud hallelujah? Psalm 105, I'll be reading from verse 6. Now I'd like you to stay connected to this meeting because the blessings will be coming as the message is flowing. Is someone hearing me? Aha. So be very, very sensitive in the spirit so you don't miss out of your blessing. Psalm 105, and I'll read from verse 6 to 16. O 
ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He had remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Saying, unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets. No harm. I'll stop here. May I pray for someone here today? In the name that is above every other name. After the meeting of tonight, you and your family will become untouchable. <laughs> Anyone that tries to do you harm, I stand in the name that is above every other name. To declare from this altar, if they fail to repent, they will pay with their own lives. The louder your amen, receive it now in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please recover your seats. Something about the anointing and the one. Who is anointed? Anyone that truly carries the anointing of God is a very dangerous man. I come again. Anyone that carries God anointing truly Is a very, very dangerous man. If you live in the reality of this understanding, you truly become a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Because you operate in very dangerous dimension and realm that is difficult to comprehend. And I'm praying for someone here today my God will take you to that realm. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Now listen to this. Saul was anointed as the king over Israel. In 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6b, 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6b, the Bible says, Thou shalt be turned into another man. In NIV, it says, You will be changed into a different person. Now, listen. His name didn't change, his family background did not change, the village he came from didn't change, the town where he was born did not change. But something changed about Saul after he was anointed. Suddenly he started operating in a dimension that was difficult to understand. Because something had happened to him. I'm praying for someone here today. After tonight, my God will turn you to another man. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. The soul that people knew before the anointing was not the soul that showed up after the anointing. Some of you may have walked into this meeting, you know, it's a um, father's blessing. It's an anointing service. We are used to it. <laughs> but hear me very well. Tonight is a different night. The way you came is not the way you will live tonight. Who is the fellow I'm talking about? 
Can you shout a loud amen? Before Saul was anointed, he was a nobody. But after the anointing, he became a captain and a leader of men. David was a poor shepherd. I'd like you to follow me this, this, uh, this evening. A poor shepherd that nobody knew. But immediately he was anointed that night, that day. Instantly, David became a solution to many problems. The first problem he solved was that he became the solution to the madness of the king. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 23, give it to me in NLT. 1 Samuel 16, verse 23. After the anointing that came upon David, 1 Samuel 16, verse 23, it says, And whenever the tormenting spirit, remember, the spirit of the Lord came upon David after he was anointed, and an evil spirit came upon Saul. And the Bible said, Whenever the tormenting spirit from God troubled Saul, David was called into the palace. All he was doing there was to play the harp. The Bible says, David would play the harp. Then Saul will feel better and the tormenting spirit will go away. Listen to me. It is not the harp that David played that settled Saul. It was the anointing he carried. By the reason of that anointing, whatever he touches becomes a solution. I pray for someone here today. After the anointing of tonight, anywhere you enter, things will become normal. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Whatever may have been going wrong in your family, as you step into that environment, normalcy returns from tonight in the name of Jesus. It was the anointing that came upon Elisha. the servant of Elijah that turned him from a servant not just to a leader of men but a kingmaker to the extent that you know by the reason of his spoken word famine and siege was taken out of an entire nation in 2 Kings 7 verse 1 he says by this time tomorrow if I be a man of God this will happen Someone said, how could it be? And he said, don't worry. You know the evidence? You will see it with your eyes. But you will not partake of it. And it came to pass. Because he spoke under the unction of the anointing. The anointing of God came upon Peter. Peter was a fisherman of no consequence. No pedigree. But the moment the Holy Spirit, which is the anointing, came upon him, Peter became the rallying point for the spread of the gospel. To the extent that his shadow became more powerful than Bethesda. Bethesda is a place where they carry sick people to. And the angel will come and stir up the water. And when they throw people in, they get healed. But Peter, it was just his shadow. They will put sick people and pray that his shadow will cover them and they get healed. I pray for someone here today. By the reason of the anointing of tonight, you will be turned to another man. Amen. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Place your hand on your chest and say in the name of Jesus, amen. after tonight's anointing, I'll be turned to another man. Say it as if you mean it in the name of Jesus. After tonight's anointing, I will be turned to another man. You receive that shout aloud. Amen. And I pray for someone here. 
everyone here that is weak, you are leaving this meeting becoming the captain of men and resources. Whoever the world has called Paul and of no consequence, by the reason of the encounter of tonight, you are receiving power to become a man of exploit in the name of Jesus. Everyone at the level of a servant, may I pray for you from this altar that in the name that is above every other name, my God will take you to higher grounds. And may I pray for 300 persons under the sound of my voice. Before this year is over, you will become a rallying point for your generation. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Recover your seats. Now, touch not my anointed. Is a statement of fact. It is not a plea. Read your Bible very well. When God said, touch not my anointed. He was not begging. He was not making a plea. He was not giving an advice. It was not a counsel. He was sounding a note of warning. Give me Psalm 105 verse 14. In King James Version. Verse 14. He says, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yeah, he reproved kings for their sakes. Give it to me in NIV. NIV. He says, he allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake, he rebuked kings. Give it to me in NLT. Yet, he did not let anyone oppress them. What did he do? He warned kings on their behalf. And go to verse 15. What was the warning? Touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Listen, God is not begging anyone. He's simply saying, by the time my children are carrying this anointing, if you love your life, stay away from them. Because if you touch them, May I pray for someone here today? As your head receives the anointing of tonight, anyone that touches you will have himself to blame. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. In Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Zechariah 2, verse 8 and 9. It says, For thus said the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you, toucheth the apple of his eye. And see the consequence. He said, For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. I don't know who the Lord is sending me to tonight, but I'm speaking under the unction of the anointing. In the name that is above every other name, anyone that touches you from tonight is touching the apple of God's eye. And whatever that means, it simply means that God will contend on your behalf. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, quickly, because of our time, seven things that cannot touch you after tonight. Seven things. Pay attention. There are quite a lot, but I'm going to dwell on seven things that cannot touch you after tonight. Thank you, Lord. The 
word of God is coming to someone here tonight. The Lord says, I should tell you, your family will be celebrated again. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Seven things that cannot touch you after tonight. By the reason of the anointing. Number one is sickness. Sickness will have no hiding place in your body after tonight. Thank God for the Bam and Gilead services that took place tonight. Those of you who were here and those of you connected online, thank God for the miracles. Thank God for the manifestation of his power. Healing is good, but divine health is better. My wife is here. You can ask her. It's been well over 15 years or even more. Well, I mean, it could be, it could be up to 20 years that I last, I last suffered from malaria. But I suffered from any ailment that brought me down. Now, compare this to the years before then. I was always having malaria every month. There's no month that will pass that I'm not taking a malaria drug, or I'm not in the hospital to treat malaria. But I entered into the reality of this understanding. You can't carry God's anointing and become a prey to the devil. That same grace that is at work in my life, I pray in the name that is above every other name, Someone here will become untouchable by sickness in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 105 verse 37, Psalm 105 verse 37, it says, He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was, take note, there was not, not one, 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 Feeble person among their tribes. One, not one. The Bible is so clear. Not one feeble person. Check the dictionary meaning of feeble. Someone who is weak. Someone who is frail. Someone who is pale. Someone, you know. That's feeble. The Bible says not one amongst their tribes. So all the 12 tribes of Israel, not one person came out of Israel, came out of Egypt sick. I pray for someone here today. Everything called sickness in your life. By the power of the anointing of tonight, they are terminated in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough. You can't be falling in and out of sickness every day as if it's a routine. That will no longer be your testimony. In James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. It says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. If he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. I stand as God's representative here, and I speak in the name that is above every other name. Any form of sickness that followed you to the meeting of tonight, they are terminated on this ground in the name of Jesus. 
And from today, no more sickness for you. I don't know who I'm talking about. From today, you will live in divine health. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. In Exodus 23, verse 25, because this is God's promise, it says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And he says, I will take sickness from where? Away from the midst of thee. Touch not my anointed. Sickness after today will see you and run. You receive that shout aloud, amen. amen. Place your hand on your chest. Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. By, the of By the anointing of tonight. Sickness is not permitted, sickness is not permitted. To, touch to touch me. And any sickness hiding in any part of my body. I command you out in the name of Jesus. You receive that shout aloud, amen. Number two, causes. Touch not my anointed. Every cause hanging over you and around you will be deactivated tonight. Yeah. Well, let me drop this warning. Or let me drop this advice. If you are here, you did something that you know is wrong or was wrong to your parents. And because of that, they pronounced a curse on you. If they are still alive, please find them wherever they are and ask for forgiveness. But if they are no more, you can't reach them. Just ask for God's mercy. Because the anointing of tonight will go ahead on your behalf to cancel whatever cause is speaking against your life. Causes can be very powerful. Especially when they are backed up by some forces. But for the one that is anointed, there are two things that God will do concerning any cause that may be hanging around you. Number one, God may decide to turn the cause to a blessing. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 4 to 5. Give it to me in NLT. Deuteronomy 23. 4 to 5 in NLT. It says, These nations did not welcome you with food and water when you came out of Egypt. Instead, they hired Balaam, son of Beor, from Petor in distant Aram Nahiram to curse you. But the Lord your God refused to listen to Balaam. He turned the intended curse into a blessing. Because the Lord your God loves you. May I pray right away for everyone here. Whoever may have cursed you wrongly. Whether they are alive or they are dead. Tonight, all such causes are turning to become blessings in the name of Jesus. can also cause whatever cause that is pronounced on you to backfire. It returns to where it is coming from. In Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, let me have it in NIV. In Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. It says, I will bless those who bless you. And whoever causes you, I will cause and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. 
Can I turn that to prayer for someone here? Stand on your feet. In the name that is above every other name. Anyone that has cursed you before now, if they fail to repent, all such causes, they return back to sender in the name of Jesus. Anyone that has opened his mouth to say it will not be well with you, on this ground today, the 10th day in the month of July 2022, I speak back to all such forces and all such agents, every negative word spoken into the lives of God's children, they return back to sender in the name of Jesus. Let me even tell you, no one is permitted to mock you. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, 22 to 23, NLT. 2 Kings, chapter 2, 22 to 23. And the water has remained pure ever since, just as Elisha said. Go ahead. Elisha left Jericho and went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, a group of boys from the town began mocking and making fun of him. Go away, Baldi, they chanted. Go away, Baldi, 24. Elisha turned around and looked at them. And he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of them. Anyone that is mocking your life and destiny for no just cause. I speak in the name that is above every other name. Disaster of unknown dimension is coming after them if they fail to repent in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have declared. God bless you. Please be seated. Number three, thing that will not be able to touch you after tonight. And please receive it because it will be to you according to your faith. The third thing is poverty. It is possible for someone to be anointed though. I'm still living in poverty. I need to balance my, my, my message tonight. And it happens when you have a poverty mentality and a poverty mindset. Remember one of the sons of the prophets that left behind debts for the wife and the children. So you must make up your mind today, number one, to drop every poverty mindset that you carry. Number two, make up your mind that when God blesses you, it will not end with you, but you will also be a blessing. Because it says, I will bless thee and thou shalt be a blessing. Number three, and this is very important, make sure you pay your tithes. I've been titan since I knew titan. And my life keeps getting better every day. So if anybody's telling you titan is, is, I mean, set your scriptures. It's biblical. I've taught titan here over and over again. Pay your tithes. Be committed to the cause of the less privileged, of the needy. Of the people around you. Once you have that understanding, then the anointing of tonight will work for you. Yeah. How will it work for you? 
I've said about three, four things, but you must add diligence. Diligence, hard work, hard work. See, as that a man diligent in his business, he will stand before kings and not before mean men. Proverbs 22, 29. You must work hard. Whatever your hand find it to do, do it well. But the anointing of tonight will stir up an activation in the spirit realm that makes it impossible for poverty to touch you. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, Philippians 4 verse 19, let me show it to you in NLT. We are used to reading it in King James Version, but see how NLT presents it. He says, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Leave it there. And I'm pointing out something. This same God, he did not say your pastor. He didn't say your uncle. He didn't even say your government. And my God shall supply all your needs. This same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs. So you don't need to depend on any man. How God will do it, I don't know. But can he do it? Yes. And see what Moses told the Israelites when he was reporting, you know, describing, telling them what, how God has helped them. Deuteronomy 29, 5 and 6, NLT. Deuteronomy 29, 5 and 6. It says, for 40 years, <laughs> pay attention to this. That's why your trust should be on God and not any man. For 40 years, I led you through the wilderness. Yet, your clothes and sandals did not wear out. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other alcoholic drink, but he gave you food so you would know that he is the Lord, your God. A man that can take care of an entire nation for 40 years, you are too small for him to take care of. May I pray for you tonight? After this anointing, divine provision will become yours. Now in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 3 and 4, 1 Samuel 10, verse 3 and 4, Saul had been anointed, but he had the instruction that they gave to him. He says, thou shalt go on forward. Give it to me in NLT so that it can flow. When you get to the oak of Tabor, you will see three men coming towards you who are on their way to worship, to worship God at Bethel. One will be bringing three young goats. Another will have three loaves of bread. And the third will be carrying a wineskin full of wine. Verse 4. They will greet you and offer you two of the loaves which you are to accept. Listen to this. They were coming with three loaves. They had need for those things. They were going with it for a purpose. But suddenly, they met this man who never asked them for anything. They took two out of the three and handed it over to him. Saul never requested for it. But it was the anointing that he carried that put him at a level where it became difficult for men to resist him. May I pray for someone here? Supernatural work transfer is happening to you as I speak now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Please receive this because I know it will surely come to pass. Every garment of poverty that followed you to this meeting. In the name of Jesus, I command them, turn in the name of Jesus. Blessings and breakthroughs you never asked for. They will pursue and take you in the name of Jesus. Doors 
doors you never knocked for, knocked on, my God will cause them to open supernaturally for you in the name of Jesus. Place your hand on your chest. Say in the name of Jesus. After tonight, it's bye bye to poverty. Say it as if you mean it in the name of Jesus. After tonight, for me and my family, it is bye bye to poverty. Say poverty, go in the name of Jesus. Amen. I see giants emerging from this meeting. During the seven days of glory, the man of God made some very dangerous prophecies. <laughs> from this congregation, will emerge men and women that will become so relevant that the world will find it difficult to ignore and resist them. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please recover your seats. Number four. That will not touch you by the reason of the anointing of tonight. Is untimely death. Nobody will carry the anointing of tonight and die before he saw her time. Exodus 23 verse 26. Exodus 23 verse 26. It says there will be no miscarriages or infertility in your land and I will give you long full lives. King James Version says the number of thy days I will fulfill. NIV I will give you a full lifespan. I am sure when the last, um, when we had the coronavirus, when it was really, really hot, and that daddy kept telling us that only those whose time has come will go. Some of us found it difficult to take. But that God made it possible for you to survive coronavirus. Especially in an environment like this. Like we find ourselves in this place. In, I mean, in this town and in this, in this nation. That it simply means that no arrow of death is permitted to hit you before your time in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 18, Isaiah 28 verse 18, it says, give it to me in King James Version, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled. I thought your amen would be better. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. May I stand on this ground to speak into the life of someone here? Every covenant of death that may have been entered on your behalf, with or without your knowledge, by the reason of the anointing of tonight, they are cancelled in the name of Jesus. I said they are cancelled in the name of Jesus. Place your hand on your chest, say in the name of Jesus. By the anointing of tonight, untimely death cannot touch me. I will live long. I will live well. I will live healthy. You receive that shout aloud, amen. It doesn't matter if you are carrying any negative report from the doctors. <laughs> After all, Lazarus was dead for four days. But Jesus came and reversed it because it was not yet his time. May I pray for someone here who may have been told that your days are numbered. I stand on this ground in the name of the one who sent me. 
and I speak over your life. Every such pronouncements and reports, they are reversed. They are reversed. They are reversed. In the name of Jesus. Number five, that is not permitted to touch you after the anointing of tonight. Human or satanic agents, you'll be untouchable to them. If they try it, they will die. <laughs> Who are these people? Evil men. Wicked people. Enemies of progress. Occultists. Diviners. Witches and wizards. Thank God for the word of God. Exodus 22 verse 18. Exodus 22 verse 18. It says, suffer not a witch to live. Any witch that will fly over your roof after tonight. They will be electrocuted. <laughs> Even when there's no current, the supernatural currents will catch up with them wherever they are in the name of Jesus. And that flight they want to embark upon tonight will be the last they will ever fly. I can't hear your amen. He says, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Whoever wants to try you after tonight, except you don't know what you carry, that person will die untimely in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24 to 25, NIV, Isaiah 44, 24 to 25. He says, this is what the Lord says. You are the demon who formed you in the womb. I am the Lord who has made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself, who foils the signs of false prophets and makes fools of diviners, who overthrows the learning of the wise and turns it into nonsense. Isaiah 49, 25 and 26. Isaiah 49, 25 and 26. It says, but this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunders retrieved from the fierce. I will contend with those who contend with you. And your children I will save. 26. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will be drunk on their own blood as with wine. That all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Stand on your feet. Say in the name of Jesus. After tonight, anyone that contends with me, God will contend with them. They will eat their own flesh and drink their own blood. You receive that shout a resounding amen. amen. And look at Exodus 15, 9 to 11. Sit down, please. Exodus 15, 9 to 11. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My loss shall be satisfied upon them. This is what the enemy said. I will draw my sword and my hand shall destroy them. But see what God did. Thou this blow with thy wind. The sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee? O oh Lord, among the gods, who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders.
listen to me after tonight, fear should be taken out of your dictionary. Whatever is called fear, you should just cancel it, take it out of your dictionary. Because from tonight, <laughs> uh, your enemies are at your mercy. And so shall it be. Number six, that cannot touch you. We are about to finish. We are about closing now. Yokes and bondages. Touch not my anointed. You are going to be completely immune from all manner of yokes and bondages. Yokes are hindering obstacles. They are destiny limiting barriers. There are satanic structures and satanic systems that sponsor affliction in the lives of men. Yokes will place the destiny of a man at the mercy of his enemies. But thank God, because tonight is the night of the anointing. And in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, Isaiah 10, verse 27, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, which day? That his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed. Because of what? Say in the name of Jesus. By the anointing of tonight, every yoke in my life, they are destroyed permanently. You receive that shout aloud, Amen. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 1, Deuteronomy 15, verse 1, it says, And at the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. There's something special about seven. This is the seventh month. <laughs> ah, whoever is being held bound by any form of bondage, bondage, yokes of stagnation, of marital delays, I speak in the name that is above every other name. In this seventh month, all such yokes are broken and you are releasing that Jesus. You are releasing the name of Jesus. You are releasing the name of Jesus. You are releasing the name of Jesus. You are coming out from every bondage in the name of Jesus. The louder your amen receiving in the name of Jesus. Whatever may have kept you down on one spot, this is your month of release. You are breaking out. 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 Can you rise up and shout, I am breaking out? Someone is moving into a new realm after tonight. I can hear one word again and again in my spirit. Unstoppable. Uh, you become like a moving train. Anyone that dares to stop you will be crushed dead on arrival. That will be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. One more thing that will not be permitted to touch you or to be activated anymore in your life. And this is where I will stop tonight. Is self-inflicted weaknesses. Self-inflicted weaknesses. 
the anointing of tonight will deliver you from every weakness that can ruin your destiny. David was anointed. But in the journey of his life, he committed a blunder. And he fell. You all know the story. David versus Bathsheba and Uriah. But then he repented. And he prayed a prayer. Very solid prayer. Turn with me to Psalm 51. And we'll read from verse 10 to 12. This was David. He was just pouring his heart before God. And he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 11. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me. It will bring you back from where you have fallen. And make you untouchable to such weaknesses anymore. We never heard after the Bathsheba encounter that David went back again. Because God reconnected him back. And he went on to fulfill destiny. To become the man after God's heart. To the extent that when you call Jesus son of David, he answers you. I pray for someone here today. God is bringing you back again. Addictions are ending tonight. Weaknesses that will ruin your destiny, they are overturned tonight. Sin will no longer be attractive to you after tonight. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Everything about your life that has become a soft spot for the devil to connect with tonight. By the reason of the anointing, there will be a complete disconnect. Yeah. God will disconnect you completely. Yeah. Some of you hearing the sound of my voice, you have used your own hands to reveal your secrets to so many people. Your mouth. And they are now using it against you. Oh, hear me. God will work on their memory tonight. Every record, every record, wherever they have studied, by the mercies of God, all such records will be completely, you know, cancelled in the name of Jesus. Bow down your heads. I'm led to pray for everyone here struggling with one form of addiction or the other before we take the anointing and then I give the Father's blessings. You're struggling with one form of addiction or the other. You're struggling with one form of secret sin or the other. Or you're making up your mind tonight that, Father, I just want to walk under your cover from tonight so that I become untouchable. But I want to make it up with you so that nothing will hinder my blessings from tonight. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand. You're struggling with some form of addiction that you know will ruin your destiny. You're here, you still have some secret sins that you're battling with. 
quickly come before the altar. Let me pray with you. Wherever you are, just come. Just come. Just come. It's your night. It's a night of liberty. It's a night of moving to another realm completely. Just come. Just come. Just come. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. He, my humble cry. Just go ahead and talk to the Lord. But you are here sitting in the congregation. The number God showed to me is far, far more than what I'm seeing here. I'm begging you in your best interest, don't waste the anointing of tonight. Come and settle with God. And allow him to do what he wants to do in your life. Thank you, Lord. If you are coming, quickly come because I want to pray now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you. If you are coming, just come quickly. Just come. Just come. God bless you. Please, ushers, make way for them if they are coming. Ministers of God, let's stretch forth our hands towards these ones. There's nothing to be shy about it. But as you are asking God for mercy, ask for his grace never to go back to this sin anymore. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, I want to thank you specially for all of these, your children, that have decided tonight to settle with you afresh. Lord, I pray that you have mercy on every one of them. Forgive all their sins. Every form of addiction that the enemy has used to put them in bondage. Father, tonight, Deliver them completely in the name of Jesus. 
the grace they need to serve you from now on. Release to them all in the name of Jesus. And by the reason of the anointing of tonight, cause every yoke of sin to be destroyed permanently in their lives. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, I'd like you to fill those cards and return to me through the ushers. I want to continue praying along with every one of you. And from now on, God will answer your prayers. Let's put our hands together. Ask a go. feet wherever you are stand on your feet now just rise wherever you are you lift up your voice and say father from tonight make me untouchable just go ahead and begin to pray cause the anointing of tonight To be activated in my life and make me untouchable. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer.
my body. Let your fire touch my soul. Let your fire.
Now, this is a very, very crucial part of the meeting tonight. By the grace of God, the oil with which you are anointed with tonight was blessed by our Father in the Lord. If you remember Mount Carmel in scriptures, is a mountain of encounter. It was at that mountain that fire fell. We have our own Mount Carmel at Ifewara, for those of you who don't know. And from that mountain, our father prayed on this oil. And everyone anointed with this oil tonight. If only your faith can carry it. It will be very strange for you to be defeated anymore. Yeah. And because also this is the first month in the second half of this year 2022, the anointing of tonight is clearing the way for you for the second half. But in the next two minutes, I would like you to pray. What exactly do you want this anointing to do for you? Lift up your voice and begin to pray. In two minutes, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Be very, very specific tonight. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. Please make sure you are praying. Forget everyone around you. Begin to round up your prayers now. Thank you, everlasting Father.
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, I beg you, stretch forth your hands towards the altar. If you are sitting down, can you please stand? Father in heaven, I want to thank you for tonight. Thank you for remembering us the way you have remembered us tonight. Thank you for making up your mind to bless us the way you have blessed us tonight. Please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, with all sense of humility, I stand before all of these your children as your representative in this house. In the order of my father, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Adeboye. And I pronounce a blessing over these your children. And from now on, in the name that is above every other name, you are blessed. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. The works of your hands are blessed. Your businesses are blessed. Amen. Your families are blessed. Amen. Your children are blessed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone that blesses you is blessed. Amen. Whoever curses you is cursed. Anyone that may have pronounced a curse upon your life, upon your destiny, in the name that is above every other name, all such curses are reversed in your favor. Because it is written, touch not my anointed, no harm from this day forward sickness is not permitted to touch you you will live above sickness you will live above poverty you will live above causes in the name of Jesus every garment of poverty tonight I stand in the name of the one that sent me and I speak over your lives all such stumbling blocks they are dismantled in the name of Jesus anyone after your life will die in your place Anyone after the life of your children will pay with their own children. Anyone after your destiny, my God will bring them down for your sake. In the name of Jesus, I stand on this ground to proclaim over your life every yoke, every bondage of the enemy every burden, every affliction that has become your lot, this day, they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. 
you are coming out from every bondage you are breaking loose from every yoke father i pray for anyone in captivity any form of captivity human or spiritual this day by your power and by your mercy they are free in the name of jesus they are free in the name of jesus they are free in the name of jesus every weakness in your life that has become a point of connection to the devil this day my god will turn them to strength in the name of jesus you will no longer be vulnerable to the forces of darkness in the name of jesus and in the order of jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19 i speak over your life and over the life of everyone connected to this meeting after tonight none of you will be small again in every area of life my god will take you higher as you have entered the second half of this year whatever it is that you lay your hands upon my God will breathe upon them in the order of Daniel chapter 1 verse 20 I speak over your lives amongst your peers and wherever you find yourself you will be 10 times better you will be 10 times better in your life you'll be 10 times better at home 10 times better in your academics 10 times better in your finances 10 times better in the name of jesus and i pray for you in this second half of the year every disappointment you suffered in the first year by the anointing of tonight they are terminated this second half for you will be a second half of recovery a second half of glory a second half that will be ten times better a second half of liftings in the name of Jesus what eyes have not seen what ears have not heard what have not entered into the hearts of men the Lord will release to you in the name of Jesus in this second half you will enjoy uncommon favor favor from men favor from God favor at home favor abroad in the name of Jesus after tonight you will sing a new song and anytime I hear from you it shall be for testimonies so shall it be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus mighty name we have prayed you believe it is done shout amen three times